today. An update on our dual queen, Lazius Flavos pet ant colony and why I won't be covering them in the future. Right after the intro. Hello and welcome to another Ants Vienna video everyone. If you are new to the channel, our intro should have given you a rough idea of what we do here on Ants Vienna. We cover ant keeping as a hobby and even help you get started by showing you how to catch your first queen ant. Just check our last video for more on queen catching. Now. The time has come to start updating you on our existing ant colonies, since many of you have been asking on updates on various of the species I keep. And the most requested one seems to be Lazius flavus. So we'll start with them. Before I go into all the details, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button. You'll know you've done it right when it turns blue. And subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any important announcements, like the launch of our Ants Vienna Discord server a couple of weeks ago. So we can all help each other out, identify the new queens we find and much much more. You'll find a link to our Discord in the video's description below. So, last time I updated you on this colony. It was about them suffering losses due to me forgetting to water them. Which is a mistake that can happen both to new and experienced ant keepers. And what mistakes are good for in ant keeping are to force you think about it in another way and prevent them from harming your colonies in the future. So for my part, I have learned from my mistake and do now keep the setup more humid, even if this causes some mold at times, since this is a plaster construction after all. And now always provide them with a little biformica liquid ant feeder filled with water. So they won't run short, even in the event of me forgetting to water them again. Both the queens and the workers of our little Lazius Flavus colony seem to appreciate these changes and act accordingly. The workers always provide some water to the queens and their sisters from the liquid feeder. I can't tell because there are always a few workers in the feeder's area. And the queens have laid some more eggs to stock up the losses in worker numbers suffered from the dehydration. As a result, the workers' numbers have now increased from 13 to 30 and the colony seems to have recovered, at least up to a certain extent. However, as you can tell from the tone of my voice, there are still two things bugging me about them. First, the queens seem to be in an egg-laying pause of sort for a while now. And second, I have noticed some black dots, stigmata, on most of the workers. And I'll try to zoom in so you can better see what I mean here. So, does anyone of you Entsvena family know what these black stigmata on the workers are? Are they bad for the ants? If so, how could we help them get all healthy again? I would appreciate any useful tips from you guys and girls in the comments. And now for the second part of the teaser. Me not covering this colony anymore, that is. In my time keeping this colony, I grew to like them a lot. 
Lazius flavus are a very peaceful ant species. They are neither territorial nor do they show intraspecies aggressiveness. The exact opposite of their sister species, Lazius niger, who try to gain and keep resources for themselves, defending them and their territory with everything they've got. And that goes no matter whether it's other animals or other ants, even other Lazius niger colonies that oppose them. I also had to learn the hard way around that Lazius flavus need much more humid conditions than other ants. That may also be due to them living a mostly underground life in their natural environment, the European gardens. Furthermore, having seen how these species can flourish given the right conditions by uncovering a wild Lazius flavus colony while doing some gardening, I have come to the conclusion to set this colony free where they belong. This is the huge Lazius flavus colony I happened to find in my garden. They were building huge chambers with a lot of queen ant pupa under some pathing stones, which is of course a normal thing for ants to do, to put their pupa to the warmest places they can, so that they grow faster. Undoubtedly, under this plate, the conditions are almost ideal, because the sun warms up the plate, which in turn warms up the chambers underneath and helps any larva or pupa grow faster. And this is very essential, even more to queen ant pupa than to other normal pupa. So, without me knowing, I caused a huge commotion here in this colony because of lifting up that plate. But sometimes some things have to be done and this was one of them. The ants may not have been happy about it, but they accepted things as they were and did their best to transport all the brood to other deeper chambers of their nest. And I will leave some of the footage in the background so you guys can see their movements in detail, how they do and go about it in their natural environment while I keep talking. That all being said, what I and we on this channel are certainly not done with is covering Lazius flavus as a species. And that's because last year I managed to catch this three queen colony. Up to now, they have been silently growing off camera. But it's time for them to succeed our dual queen colony and become our official Lazius Flavus colony from now on. And having already been able to monitor how this species behaves in an ant farm by watching the movements of the workers, the queens and everything. I want to give this new colony the freedom to do what they would normally do. And this can only be done in a naturalistic setup. Yes, you heard that right. This is exactly what we'll be doing in our next video. We will create a nice natural setup for our new three queen colony of Lazius flavus to call home. Now hit that like button if you like the idea of a natural setup and are as excited as I am about creating it. Subscribing and enabling all notifications will ensure you won't miss it. And this 
pretty much wraps today's video up, Antriana family. Before we part, I'll leave you with the questions of the day. Do you keep or have you kept any ants of the genus Lasius? Did they worry you at any point in time? And did your pet ant colony ever happen to have black stigmata like mine Lasius flavus do? How did you treat them? I'll be happy to hear your experiences in the comments. I promise to read through and reply to all of them. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!